Hello, and welcome to another session on using Blender for video editing. Here we're going to talk about how to use animated GIFs, or GIFs, however you want to pronounce it. It's those fun little animated images that you find all, all over on the internet, and we need to talk about how to bring them in separately from normal images because they don't come in easily. Uh, let me show you. So I am going to switch over to my browser. You can see I've already done a search and I have selected this fun image to try to load into Blender. So I'll just save that. Uh, oh, actually I already have, I've already saved that. I'll just replace that. And now that I have it, I will go back to Blender and try to import it. So if I go to add image and first problem is I don't even see it here. Um, yeah, because apparently Blender only shows you PNG images and not GIF images. Um, let's see if there's a filter I can get rid of. I don't think there's a filter. Okay, oh anyway. Even if I can't see it from here, I know I can just cancel that and I can go to my Windows Explorer and drag and drop it in. So let me try that now. There we go. And yes, so you can see I was able to uh, specify the image and there's the name of it inside the strip properties, but uh, it's, it's empty, can't do anything with it. So let's get rid of that, click X and then OK, and talk about how we can do it. So it boils down to some pre-processing. We have to... Um, change the image file into something that Blender will accept. What I like to do is to use a program called FFmpeg, which that name might ring a bell because it's the same uh, general tool set that's used by Blender itself when you want to render stuff out to video. So recall we go to properties and we scroll down to the output type and change it from PNG to the video thing, it says right there, FFmpeg, video. So I think it's the same thing. I've never tried to confirm that, but that's the same tool that we'll use to do the conversion. We'll take that animated GIF and we'll convert it into the a, ser a sequence of images. Um, and as we saw from the previous video, we can use we can load that sequence in no problem. So how to do that? Step one is to get it. If you're if you have, uh, if you're running Linux operating system, I think it comes in a in a basic uh, deep base install. If you're running Windows like I am, you can download it. I'll provide the link in the show notes. Uh, once you have it downloaded, then the command to use is well, let me let me show it to you. So first off, uh, I'm in the folder now. I have it's a command line interface program. So you have to run it from uh, some kind of shell. Here I'm using my favorite Sigwin. So once you have FFmpeg downloaded, installed, and somewhere inside of your command line path, then now it's time to call it. So here's how you can do that. Start by typing in the name of the command itself, dash I for input, and you specify, you give it the name of the input file, which in this case I've called it pbjt.gif. And now here is the most important part. This is where you have to give it uh, the name with a placeholder so it knows how to name the file and how many um, numbers to assign. It's going to name the first one as one, and then two, and then three, but you have to give it enough digits to work with, especially for a larger one. It might have more than 10, so you want to have at least two number places for it. So I'm going to call this, uh, let's see, uh, converted with an underscore. That's just my preference. And then here's the key part here, percent, zero, and let's say we want two digits, two no different numbers. So two, the number two, followed by D, and then give it the extension. So this part here, like I said, is Gonna, it's telling FFmpeg that you want to, at this point in the file name, it's going to have two numbers uh, with a leading zero, and that's how it's going to give it 
That's how it's going to name the files. Converted underscore zero one dot png, converted underscore zero two dot png, and so on and so forth. So let's hit it, the enter button now to run it and give it some time. And looks like it finished. It didn't give me any error messages. I will go now to that folder and you can see there it is. There are the files converted zero one through to zero eight. I am going to create a new folder and I'll call it import me and stick those files in there just so that I know when I go into Blender, it's going to be exactly what I'm looking for. I can enter that now just so we can see the files and there they are. So there were a total of eight frames inside that animated GIF. So from here, we can import as we normally do. All right, so I'm going to go back into Blender, go to add image, go into the import me folder and I'll press A to toggle the select all and now they're all selected. And then I can press, click on add image strip. And there it is. So that doesn't look right. It's all stretched out. And that's because the resolution is not set correctly. So I can, let me zoom in on this thing. Um, that's not very many frames at all. But anyway, the, the strip is already selected. I can go to strip. And where's that option? Set render size. There, so now it has adjusted it. So this is, these are the dimensions of the, <clears throat> of the images. And if I go to the end there and press E here to set that as the total frame range of my, uh, of my scene, now I can press the play button to see what it looks like. And that looks uh, way too fast. So as we mentioned before, with uh, when you work with image sequences, when you import them into Blender, Blender doesn't know how what frame frame rate to set. So unless you have something to guide you, really it's just up to you to decide what you want to set. I think that's way too fast. So I am going to go down over here and change this to, um, okay, I'm gonna go to custom and set that down to, let's say, 15. Okay, I think that's still a little bit too fast, so I'm going to click there and set it to 10. Okay, that's more like it. So I'm happy with this. Uh, so now I have my animated GIF imported. It looks fine, but of course it's too short, right? Like, you, if you wanted to use this as part of the rest of your project, uh, that's, way too little. So what can you do? Uh, you, there's a few options. So one thing, have the strip selected and duplicate it and then duplicate it as many times as you need. So I go to strip and where's that option? Um, I'm looking for it. Ah, here we go. Duplicate strips. The shortcut for that is the holding shift and pressing D. So we, as soon as you do that, select that, then you can see I have a second one and I'll just put this one right after it. So if I scroll, scrub across, you can see now I have two of them and you can just repeat this process. I'm gonna use the hotkey now to press Shift D again and then Shift D again and Shift D again and again and again and again and again. And now I'll set the end point of this scene to there. And if I play it now, you can see I have, it's a lot longer and for me, yeah, I would just repeat this process over and over again until I have as many as I need for my project. Or the alternative is to use it as a scene, which um, if you're making adjustments to it, um, blending it somehow uh, or doing other kind of transforms, it's you could do that uh, and there's there are advantages to it, but also some disadvantages. We'll, we'll talk about that in a future session when we talk about how to work with multiple scenes. Uh, so there you have it. Um, how to, you know, after downloading an animated GIF, how to use FFmpeg to convert it to an image sequence, which you can then import into Blender to use as, uh, as normal. So that's it. Hope you enjoy that and see you next time. Bye now.